Hey Geometry, I really truly hope you've enjoyed the last three lessons where we've been doing um, dilations because this one is a bit tough to walk through. Um, we're going through a proof, not because that's what we're doing right now, but I need to prove to you a few facts so we can use them. So uh, buckle on in and um, try to focus in and see if we can learn some new skills um, to utilize through our problem set. Cool? First thing I want to remind you of is the formula for the area of a triangle. One half base times height, where height is the altitude. Okay, let's not forget that, because we're going to need it. All right, I put my teacher notes at the top of this page, just so that you can understand why we're doing what we're doing today. Um, the purpose of this lesson is for you to understand that the ratio and the parallel methods produce the same scale drawing and understand uh, the proof of this fact. I think we could all agree that the ratio method and the parallel method produce the same scale drawings, but um, we just have to go through the proof because that proof is going to give us a few tools to use to solve some problems. Um, and then students relate the equivalence of the ratio and parallel methods to the triangular, sorry, triangle side splitter theorem. A line segment splits two sides of a triangle proportionally if and only if it is parallel to the third side. Triangle. Line. That's a terrible line. Okay, a line segment splits two sides of a triangle proportionally if and only if it is parallel to the third side. So those are parallel. That means that These are proportional. AB over AC equals DE over DF. Those are great ratios, and that's what we're doing today. All right, so first of all, for classwork. Today our goal is to show that the parallel method and the ratio method are equivalent. That is, given a figure in the plane and a scale factor greater than zero, the scale drawing produced by the parallel method is congruent to the scale drawing produced by the ratio method. We start with two easy exercises about the areas of two triangles whose bases lie on the same line, which helps show that the two methods are equivalent. I'm going to pause here for a second. I need you to have your classwork in front of you and follow along with your classwork. Yes, everything on your classwork is also on the slides, but um, my slides aren't very big and your classwork is quite long and everything connects to everything else. So um, just go ahead and have it in front of you and follow along there. All right, so this is the triangle that it was talking about in the previous slide. So suppose two triangles, triangle ABC and triangle ABD. Let's go ahead and highlight those. I got A, B, C and A, B, D. Okay, suppose um, they share the same base, A, B. Obviously, I'll be erasing that. It's funny, every time I open up a new slide, that highlighter gets really, really thick. Okay, they share that side right there. So I've got A, C, B, and A, B, D. Those are my two triangles. Okay, um, they share the same base AB such that the points C and D lie on a line parallel to line AB. So C and D are on this parallel line up here. Okay, show that their areas are equal. That is area of triangle ABC equals area of triangle ABD. Hint. Why are the altitudes in each triangle equal in length? OK, 
okay, we can agree that these parallel lines are equal distance. So I'm actually going to try this. Nope. It's hard to draw very exact on here. There is my altitude. And there is my altitude. I wrote that perpendicular sign on the bottom on purpose. So the altitudes of each triangle are equal in length. All right, so let's see. Let's go ahead and label this C prime and that D prime. All right, so we have, um, we just drew a line, a perpendicular line to line A, B through C, and we labeled that intersection um, C prime. So C, C prime, segment C, C prime, is the altitude for triangle A, B, C. And we did the same for triangle A, B, D. We got altitude D, D prime for triangle A, B, Cool? All right, let's look at this. I have now quadrilateral C, C prime, D prime, D. Let's highlight that. C, C prime, D prime, D. Right there. It's a quadrilateral. And it's also a parallelogram. So we know that C, C prime is equal to D, D prime. Because they're parallelograms and the properties of parallelograms say opposite sides are congruent and parallel. So since C and C prime are, let's go right here, altitudes, we can say that the area of triangle ABC is one half base times height, and then the area of triangle ABD is one half base times height and that's the area of triangle ABD. Cool? So we'll go back to the question, make sure we answered it. Suppose two triangles, triangle ABC and ABD share the same base. Show that their areas are equal. Okay, which we did show. We know that these are equal. And I used them there, therefore the areas are equal because everything else in those equations are the same. All right, part B. Suppose two triangles have different length bases, segment AB and segment AB prime that lie on the same line. Furthermore, suppose they have the same vertex C opposite these bases, show that the value of the ratio of their area is equal to the value of the ratio of the lengths of their bases. So area of triangle ABC over area of triangle AB prime C is equal to segment, the length of segment AB over the length of segment AB prime. Okay, so I need an altitude and the altitude is going to be the same for both triangles, correct? So I have the, oops, we don't want the highlighter. Sorry. Um, area of triangle ABC over the area of triangle AB prime C I've got one half ABCC prime. We should label that 
over one half a b prime c c prime and that is equal to a b over a b prime because those cancel and those cancel and that is what we have left pretty awesome all right a little bit of discussion the triangle side splitter theorem um, the curriculum says that this is the most important result of this whole module. Okay, we're only in lesson four of the module, and it says it's the most important result of the whole module. Um, basically, a line parallel to one side of a triangle divides the other two proportionally and conversely. Um, we're going to use the triangle side splitter theorem over and over many times in the next few lessons to understand dilations and similarity. Okay, um, similarity is something we're just getting into. So we want to note that using the angle-angle similarity criterion to prove the triangle side splitter theorem is circular. So we're using something to prove something that is used to prove something else. It goes in a circle. The triangle side splitter theorem is the reason why a dilation takes a line to a parallel line and an angle to another angle of equal measure. Um, so we need to prove the triangle side splitter theorem in a way that does not invoke these two ideas. So um, yeah, we're working through two proofs. And they say these two proofs are the simplest known proofs of these theorems, um, and they should be easy to understand. They rely on subtle tricks. So um, and they rely on subtle tricks that they say that mathematicians constructed over 2,300 years ago, which I, um, I find interesting, but this does not mean that you guys, um, you guys can't understand it yourself, so just focus on in and let's see if we can get through it. So first of all, to show that the parallel and ratio methods are equivalent, we need only look at one of the simplest versions of a scale drawing scaling segments. First we need to show that the scale drawing of a segment generated by the parallel method is the same segment that the ratio method would have generated and vice versa. That is, the parallel method leads to the ratio method and the ratio method leads to the parallel method. Um, so if we wanted to show that both methods would produce the same poly polygonal figure, why is it enough to only show that both methods would produce the same segment? So if we can show that both methods produce the same segment, then it makes sense that both methods would work for all segments that comprise the poly polygonal figure. Okay, so it's sort of speaking in circles, but that's the purpose of it. Um, the first implication above can be stated in the, as the following theorem. So the parallel to the ratio theorem, okay? Given AB and point zero, which isn't on AB, construct a scale drawing of AB with a scale factor that is greater than zero using the parallel method. So this is when we used the set square and we used this segment and we just slid out and drew this segment. So let A prime equal the dilation about O with the scale factor of R of A. So let A prime equal dilation about O with the scale factor of R of A. So here's our center. We dilated A a certain amount of a scale factor r and got a prime. Let L be the line parallel to AB that passes through A prime. That's awful. A little bit better. Okay, let B be the point where OB intersects line L. Then B prime is the same point found by the ratio method. That is, B prime equals the dilation about O, the center O, a certain scale factor R of B. 
Okay, so we took B, dilated it, the amount R, and got B prime. And we know that B prime is also on line L. Okay, um, the proof. So we prove the case when the scale factor is greater than 1, and then we prove the case when the scale factor is between 0 and 1. Okay, so we got bigger and we got smaller. Um, so when it's smaller than 1 but positive is the same but with a different picture. Okay, construct two line segments, BA prime, right here, and AB prime to form two triangles. Uh, let's see, B, A, B prime, and B, A, A prime. So we have a triangle here in gray and green, and a triangle here in green and yellow. We're labeling them um, triangle one and triangle two. Cool? Okay, this picture's gonna follow us. The areas of the two triangles are equal. Okay, we're saying that the area of this triangle is equal to the area of this triangle. It shares the base, right? And these lines are parallel. We just proved a little while ago that these lines are parallel, so the altitudes are the same. I don't know if I'm going to be able to draw that one very well. Okay, the altitudes are the same. All right. So, let's get that out of there. So we know that the area of those two triangles are the same. Um, so let's label triangle O, A, B, triangle zero. So the area of O, A prime, B, which is triangle zero plus triangle two, is equal to area O B prime A, which is triangle zero plus triangle one. So the area of O A prime B is triangle zero plus triangle two, but triangle two and triangle one are equal, so that's the area of triangle zero plus triangle one. So O A prime B is equal to O B prime A. O A prime B is equal to O, B prime, A. We know that because triangle one and triangle two are the same, they're equal, areas are equal, and triangle zero is equal to triangle zero. So triangle zero plus triangle two is equal to triangle zero plus triangle one. Cool? Moving on. Next, we apply exercise two to two sets of triangles. Okay, we have Triangle zero and triangle OAB. Triangle zero plus triangle O A prime B. So this was triangle zero plus triangle so triangle zero and triangle OAB and triangle zero and triangle O B prime A. So here we have triangle zero and triangle O A prime B and triangle zero and triangle O B prime A. Okay, here our base is OA prime, right there. And here our base was OB prime. Cool, and we know the um, area of those two triangles are equal. We said that in the last slide. Therefore, we have the area of triangle OA prime B over the area of triangle zero is equal to OA prime over OA. This right here is a comma. Please try to ignore it. I'm gonna see if I can get those triangles back over here. Hold on. Okay, let's say that again. I have triangle OA prime B. OA prime B over triangle, area of triangle OAB over the area of triangle zero is equal to OA prime over OA, okay? We proved that in lesson one and lesson two by canceling out like terms.
by dividing them out. And then we have triangle O, B prime A, over the area of triangle zero is equal to O, B prime over O, B. Okay? We learned that in exercise one and two by canceling out the things that were equal. I just wanted to restate this so that we knew where everything came from. Um, here when we say the area of O A prime B over the area of triangle zero is equal to O A prime over O A. This is why, because the area of triangle O A prime B, I've got one half base, which is O A prime over the height. We don't have um, letters for the height, so I just put in height because we agree that the height of this full triangle is the same as the height of triangle zero. Correct? So there I can cancel that out, cancel that out, and I'm left with OA prime over OA. Same for the next one. Here I have triangle OB prime A. So the area of this is one half base times the height of the triangle. I don't have letters for that, so I just put in H for height. And then that's going to be over o, one half this base, OB, over the height of triangle O. So even here, I can cancel out the heights, and I'm left with OB prime over OB. So that's where we came up with that. I just wanted to show you one more time. So since the area of triangle OAB is equal to the area of triangle OB prime A, we can equate the fractions. OA prime over OA is equal to OB prime over OB. Okay, these are our proportions, our ratios. This is the goal, what we're looking for. Since R is the scale factor used in dilating OA to OA prime, we know that OA prime over OA equals R. Every time in the last three lessons, we would draw a few triangles, we would measure OA and OA prime, and we would double check that we got the right scale factor. Okay, we would take a ruler, we would measure it, and we'd say, ooh, I got the scale factor, I'm good. Right? So that's all we're doing here is verifying OB prime over OB is equal to R or OB is equal to R times, sorry, OB prime is equal to R times OB. Okay, if I took this right here, I can just cross multiply and say OA times R is equal to OA prime. Okay, it's pure multiplication. This last equality applies that B prime is the dilation of B from O by a scale factor of four, which is what we wanted to prove. Remember, that's what we saw a few slides ago um, B prime is the dilation about center O, a certain scale factor, and we got B prime, or no, we of B, sorry, of B. So next we're going to prove the reverse implication to show that both methods are equivalent to each other. I hope this is making sense to you. I think we're doing an okay job of explaining it. <coughs> Excuse me. The ratio to the parallel theorem. So given segment AB and point O not on line AB, construct a scale drawing A prime B prime of segment AB with a scale factor of R is greater than zero using the ratio method. For example, find A prime for a dilation of center O of a certain scale factor of A and B dilation center O scale factor B. This is B prime of B and then draw A prime B prime. So B prime is the same as point found using the parallel method. Proof. Since both the ratio method and the parallel method start with the same first step, setting A prime equal to the dilation about Z, um, point O, a scale factor um, of A, the only difference between the two methods is how the second point is found. If we use the parallel method, we construct the line L parallel to line AB that passes through A prime and label the point where L intersects OB by C. Then B prime is the same point found by the parallel method if we can show that C equals B prime. Okay, so we constructed 
Let's see. Revealing. We construct line L, which um, parallel to AB. AB. So we construct line L parallel to AB that passes through A prime and label the point where L intersects OB by C. Then B prime is the same as the point found using the parallel method, method if we can show, so that's what we're trying to do here, show that C equals B prime by the parallel ratio theorem we know that C is the dilation of center O a certain scale factor of B that is C is the point on ray OB such that OC equals the scale factor times OB OC the length of this, the measurement, is equal to the scale factor times OB. So I measure this, I multiply it by the scale factor, and I get that. But B prime is also the point on ray OB, such that OB prime is equal to the scale factor times OB. OB prime is this, well here, sorry, OB prime <laughs> is the scale factor times OB. Hence, they must be the same point. Hence, who talks like that? <laughs> All right. The fact that the ratio and parallel methods are equivalent is often stated as the triangle side splitter theorem. I think that that theorem has a really funny name. Um, to understand the triangle side splitter theorem, we need a definition. Side splitter. A line segment CD, right there, is said to split the sides of triangle OAB proportionally if C is a point on OA and D is a point on OB. And OA, sorry, yes, OA over OC is equal to OB over OD, or equivalently, any of those. Okay, we call segment CD a side splitter. Triangle side splitter theorem. A line segment splits two sides of a triangle proportionally if and only if it's parallel to the third side. Restatement of the triangle side splitter theorem. Um, in triangle O, A prime, B prime, segment A, B splits proportionally if and only if A, B is parallel to AB prime is parallel to AB. A prime, B prime is parallel to AB. Cool. I hope that made sense. Um, we're going to use it in the um, problem set, and um, using it always helps it make better sense. So um, it was a proof of a lesson, which I know isn't fun, but thanks for sticking through it, and I will see you tomorrow.